Lift up your hands, let's pray, let's worship Him this morning. Open your hearts this morning, let's talk to Him this morning from your heart. The deepest things of your spirit, the real things that lays deep inside of you, what you would love the Lord to do for you today. From the depth of your heart, say, Lord, here am I. Don't forget that God sees us for who we are based on the content of our hearts. So what is the content of your heart? The word. So this morning express the word back to him. Express back the promises to him. What he promised to do for you. Yes, his covenant agreement with you. God sees us. He assesses us. He sizes us up based on the content of our hearts. Heavenly Father, we stand before you, God, this morning. Lord, with honest hearts based on the word. Lord, we can't be more honest than the word of God. So a good and honest heart is a heart that has the word as its content. And Lord, this morning we approach you based on the word of God. Because the word of God in us is the believer. And Lord, we are trusting you, God, for all the promises you have given to us. We are trusting you, God, for a tremendous message that has been made known to us by, Lord, the prophetic from Malachi 4. And today we stand justified, Lord, by that message before God that there is nothing against us. When God looks at us, He doesn't see us, He sees the world. And Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, that you have called us to become partakers of your divine nature through this message. We bless you god for the season for the time lord this bride of jesus christ has come so far lord we are about to be connected to our dynamics our true spirits lord what we really are in elohim's mind and we pray that you give us that grace to be able to connect this morning because it can happen at any time when the bride recognizes who she is when she recognizes her position when she understood how she st stands before god that there is nothing against that Jewish perfection seed in her. When she understands that by revelation, then she can pray, Lord, to God with no condemnation. Because our righteousness is based upon that seed. And God will recognize who we are just like Jesus. That was why his faith was perfect. Because he recognized he was the word. And there is nothing against the world. You can never put anything against the world. So we stand before God justified so his faith in god was perfect lord and we pray this hour that you may give us grace like the prophet said that jesus christ had to rely on who he was that he was the word why can't we also rely in who we are because we are the word because the word is the believer the words in the book that's the believer so give us grace to go beyond our human effort to come back to the world just recognize the world that in our prayer lord we pray the world our confidence is just in this world because this world can go back to god void this world will always manifest itself so raise us up this morning god into this bracket of the world so we can see and understand the world and lord we live with you based on the world help us god this morning father may we find perfect faith to operate the world that laid inside of us dormant for all these years and may the seven thunders begin to utter its voices from under p304 so you can bring the church back to st john 5 19 something that presents each of the church so we can operate lord the world bring us back to that intelligence the world is not in the bride but we need the mind of christ we need the next realm the next dimension after the prophetic after the scene after the high time the church was supposed to broke into the intelligence the mind of christ has what to do with the world inside of us because it takes the mind of christ to operate the world and the mind of christ is the dynamics the mind of christ is saint john 5 19 so bring us back to this saint john 5 19 lord that's our position that's our place in christ so we can do the greater works of god for the season we thank you god for this day lord open up our understanding god that we might understand the scriptures because how be it we can only speak wisdom but to them that are perfect we can only speak wisdom from saint john 5 19 but to them that are perfect to those who are mature in the world because the word the son can do nothing what he says the father do so elohim himself the father was the intelligence that was given to the son the word 
Lord, we pray you bring us to this position, Father. It is not just a letter, but it's a revelation. This is the place of sons of God. This is where sons of God are placed so we can operate from the prophetic dimension, so we can be guided by the intelligence. Because as many as are led by the Spirit of God, for they are the sons of God. Thank you for that for everything. We ask all these things in Jesus' name and we say Amen and Amen. Well, take your Bibles this morning. Amen. So this morning I have a little title for you, The Manifestation of the Faith, according to St. John 5.19. Amen. So Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, and then St. John 5.19 very quickly. Amen. <coughs> Sila. That's good. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of deep faith. So this is not a faith, this is deep faith. And the knowledge of the Son of God. This knowledge of the Son of God comes through intercourse with God, through divine fellowship. This is not knowledge you acquire from the books and the tapes, but this is a knowledge that is imparted into you as a result of your union with Christ. Correct? And then unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slide of men and cunning divine craftiness whereby the lie in which you receive. So this is one of the things that God is trying to bring you up to. Soundness in doctrine. Because no matter the feelings and the sensations you have, you will not be stabilized if you're not sound in doctrine. You'll be tossed to and fro with the anointing. Today you are up, tomorrow you are down with the anointing. Because anointing doesn't stabilize people. What stabilizes you is sound doctrine some teaching can somebody say mention that church that should the five for ministry it says when we bring to perfection he say henceforth you'll be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine you are stabilizing god because you understand where you stand so what stabilizes people is not anointing anointing break yokes but what stabilizes you is doctrine can somebody say doctrine this morning teaching so important. Maybe see that. And Saint John five nineteen says, Then Jesus and then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what is yet the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. So this morning I'm tying back the scripture of St. John 5, 19 to the faith. So I just said back, that's why I said the faith manifested, but according to St. John 5, 19. I think we started off last week, Sunday, trying to bring the church to perfect faith, which is the faith. So tell somebody, say, the perfect faith is the faith. This, this is not a faith. This is not your own private faith. But this is the faith. The faith of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? So I want to encourage you still to delve in and understand the doctrine. The word of God is only profitable for doctrine. For teaching. It stabilizes you. You know exactly where you stand. Can somebody say amen to that church? Because the anointing can't even stay in your life permanently if it has nothing to stay on. What keeps anointing is the word of God. 
it's not flesh your body can keep anointing but the word of god because the word is what magnetizes the anointing and the anointing only follows the word so the word is the resting place for the holy spirit that's why the holy spirit like a dove in jordan did not only come on jesus but it stayed on him it stayed permanently not just something that came and went back why, why did the anointing stay because jesus was the word because the world is the resting place for the anointing so if your life is empty of the word well you can't have you cannot keep the anointing then all this anointing will just be some wasted investments and i pray god is god is no idol god wants to make real investment can somebody shout hallelujah i don't want god's investment in your life to be a waste because this investment must bring forth fruits bring forth profit so the anointing every service every day i pray to god this morning that that does not be a waste you shall use the anointing to climb your seven steps glory to god hallelujah because time is almost up time shall be no longer i hope you realize that we've almost come to the end of time we've come to the end of the finish of the seventh seal we are going home praise god amen god is getting the church ready for the final trumpet may be seated hallelujah amen so you understand the lord himself was to descend from heaven with a shout and the shout is a message this is doctrine the shout is a message and it's called seven thunder message seven seals message that was a message that was hidden from the bible you can read your bible you won't see there amen Timon. it was hidden on the back side of the bible a hidden mystery can somebody say amen to that it's called the shout it's called the seven thunders seven seals seven voices seven arms seven lambs seven church messengers all that is all the message seven angels glory to god amen that is the message of the hour may be seated amen you believe that and this this message of the hour is all about you the old creation bible says is waiting that means all of creation is waiting for what for the manifestation of sons of god that's what the bible said so all of creation the moon the sun the stars all their eyes are on you they are all waiting for you that tells you how important you are how significant you are this is not church this is bride hallelujah praise god can you think of this that the whole of creation is even groaning is groaning is groaning is groaning they are waiting for the manifestation of sons of god yeah let me see that have you ever thought of that ah, and all these things you see all the galaxies as awesome as they are but their eyes are all down the earth they are all looking down all their faces are down look at how awesome the moon is look at how awesome the space is all of creation all their faces are down waiting for you waiting for me how can we play church this is not playing time this time to press on we are moving on you can disappoint creation praise god hallelujah they are all waiting for their redemption they want to come back to their original state but they've got to wait for you to come to perfection let me see that glory to god hallelujah now you see why there was silence in heaven i will see all of creation all of nature all the angels she understand after god created everything god in the in the heavens after god created all the, the angels he created all the seraphims created all the cherubims man was the last thing that came forth because after he created them they were all waiting for one more thing that we are waiting for man to step forth praise god the image of god something that look like god something that look just like god 
that we are waiting for it and all the angels as they say holy 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 that we are watching that we are looking to see forth a manifestation of a son of god then god said let us make man in our image hallelujah praise god what a day that was oh hallelujah maybe see the glory of god hallelujah this is what we are saying now and we we are there i said i was there hey, hallelujah praise god amen let me see that god bless you now if you had told those angels that with all your beauty and your awesomeness but i only created you to be a ministry with spirits to this man i'm going to create how would the angels feel that was why lucifer was jealous iniquity came into his heart because he thought he was the top angel because it was the anointed charo but he did not know there was one more mystery there was the image of god coming forth there was a son of god coming forth then god said let us make man in our image after our own likeness angels are not made like that lucifer is not like that only you the bride so you better thank god you better shout that god gave you this great grace to make a partaker of this divine nature you better thank god you better praise god that god elected you among millions and make you a partaker of this divine nature may god's name be praised i don't deserve it i'm not worthy but it's the grace of god the grace of god baby see that the grace of god Glory. Hallelujah. Let me see that. Glory to God. Amen. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Are you getting it? And God made this man in his own image of his own likeness. And that was the secret. Because when God was creating angels, he created the angels off of immaterial substances. He used light to create angels, angels of light. He used, he used gold and kabunkuls and, and onyx to create Lucifer. The day that was created, I covering, he used other materials. But to create you, he used the materials of his own essence, of his own being. Praise God, hallelujah. His own very word. He didn't use kabunkul. He didn't use onyx. He didn't use that. So your covering is not, not natural things gold and silver that's not your covering but your covering is the glory of god is the nature of god that is what is your covering god covered you he built you he constructed you with the very essence of his own being with the very essence of himself and somebody shouts hallelujah that's why you are different praise god glory to god amen oh baby see that hallelujah praise god now think of lucifer think of the materials that god had to list out that was in him the day he was created so he's shining with all the diamond with all the kambunk with all that these are all byproducts of creation praise god but think of you now god created you with his own glory the very materials that makes up God he used the same materials to create you so you came from the belly of God you came from the bosom of God you came from the heart of God that makes you special that's why Lucifer was jealous of you praise God because when he saw you he saw you in the array of Elohim you were a reflection not of diamond not a reflection of gold and carbuncle and onyx but your reflection was seven rainbows your reflection was god himself your reflection was jesus christ praise god hallelujah you need to understand this you will see that oh hallelujah maybe you shall praise god be seated hey! that's why you cannot fall because you are not created from those immaterial substances but your creation is different you are created by the word 
in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and you we are in the word you constitute the word no you no word praise god hallelujah so the bride is the word the bride is the very essence of jehovah's nature the bride is the very material of jehovah's nature hallelujah praise god that's who we are this is capstone we are only realizing it now and the devil is finished when the bride knows who she is when the bride knows where she stands when you know where you're coming from you come from god are you going back to god you are going back into the bellies of elohim you are going back into the innermost being of elohim the seventh seal glory to god hallelujah and you mean you cannot shout you can't thank god for this you can't praise god for this this is too much to praise god for hallelujah may be seated you got it now and that's why god had to put some silence on the seventh seal <laughs> and, 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 and what the devil does he know he does he know exactly how you were created god revealed how he created lucifer in the day thou was created but man is hidden and all the angels are watching who is man who is man that thou art mindful of him who is man it was angels asking who is man who is you they don't know praise god they don't know who you are they don't know who is man who is man that he was made lower than the angels but why did god give this man such honor and dominion why because that's a mystery Let me see that. Let me see that. What is man? I'm gonna draw. What is man? Who are you? That was the Holy Ghost upon David when he mounted up in his spirit. He saw everything. When he saw man in his glory, he had to ask in his spirit who is this man who is this man even though he's made lower than seven angels even though he's made lower than elohim but why can god give him dominion over all the things he has made why can god make him a custodian of all creation who is this man that makes man a mystery mystery let me see that oh maybe see that so now you see why the entire seventh seal is come down to one thing man that's the seventh seal that's the only thing that nature is waiting for that's the only thing that still remains mystery what is man who is man is still a mystery all down through the ages is a mystery but thank God, at the end of seven church ages, the mystery of God is finished. Now we know who man is. Now we know who we are. We are the stature of a perfect man. We are gods on the earth. We are Elohim on the earth. That's who you are. And when you say it, the devil is scared. I am Holy Spirit. I'm a spirit of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the King. When you talk like that, you become deity express. Let me see that. Let me see that. That's the seventh seal. That's the entire midst of that seventh seal. And all the angels have had to wait in heaven. They were all standing there. Waiting because God was about to unfold the great mystery. Because theologians have done their best to understand the, cre the creations of God they understand who angels are what angels are made up of because all that is written out so people who are looking for diamond and minerals they worship the devil 
because they tell themselves that all these meaningers belong to the devil but man remains mystery that's who you are so the angels were waiting to hear what God will say about man because David had asked the question long years ago what is man I want to know why you made man a custodian of all the things you have created why did you put man in charge and you gave man dominion over the parts of the air the fowls of the air I want to know why what is man who is man and that question was left unanswered but now we know who man is we know who you are recognize who you are where you are coming from where you are standing where you are going praise God hallelujah amen let me see that glory to God amen you might not understand but these things you are hearing as they fall on you it's a special anointing that can attract favor and blessing and grace in your life but just keep the word as you keep the word you keep the anointing as you keep the word you keep the grace the grace of God can only last long in your life as long as you keep the word because the grace of God follows the word the anointing follows the word the power of God follows the word the word the word the word just keep the word and tell your brother say brother keep the word 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 the word is your only hope praise God hallelujah the word is your joy the word is your peace the word is your healer the word is your grace the word is your power the word is your everything just keep the word keep the word keep the word keep the word don't mind your mistakes the mistakes will always come but just keep the word keep the word keep the word because you are coming to season when you come to your season when the dynamics comes upon the world all your weaknesses will disappear they will all evaporate because the world has the potential power to make you perfect just keep the world just keep the world keep the world keep the world i'm not keep the world keep the world keep the world the world can cast out the devils the world can stop sin the world can take out the devil the world can handle sickness it's all in the world he sent forth his word and his word heal he sent forth his word and his word delivered so deliverance healing is all in the world 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 it's all in the world in the world in the world in the world so we know we have to find it praise god hey let me see that Headstone Gospel Tabernacle. We are going somewhere. Headstone Gospel Tabernacle is blending into the Bride Age. Our change of name from the Headstone Gospel to the Bride Age. We are going to make the Bride Age. And the Bride Age is the age of the Headstone. And the Headstone is the manifestation of the Bride of Jesus Christ. We are going to make that Headstone. We are going to make that Bride Age the final age before the resurrection and the rapture oh hallelujah may be seated hallelujah praise god let me see that so you see why the enemy is jealous of you <clears throat> and he now wanted to be like god and that was the iniquity he didn't, he didn't commit any other sin he just had iniquity that means his desire is thought to ascend his throne above the stars that was iniquity his desire to be like the most high that was iniquity because it was not created that way you were created to be like lucifer was created to be a worshiper to be a messenger Ah, but you were created to be like that is your designation 
to be like Jesus. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. This is bride. This is not church. May be seated. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. So you have my seen on? So the manifestation of the faith. According to St. John 5, 19. So this church now knows the faith. That we can't have the faith. Except we come to Ephesians 4. Ah, he gives my apostles and prophets and teachers for the perfecting of the saint for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith the faith of Jesus Christ the faith of God have faith in God have the God kind of faith if you say to this mountain May we see that if you say to this mountain be thou removed but it did not say unbelief you must not have any doubt in your heart it is your unbelief if you say to this mountain but no doubt you believe but you have doubt because your faith is not perfect so what he was saying was you can't move this mountain outside perfect faith your faith must have no doubt must have no resentment must have no grudge oh, come on come on perfect faith no grudge no resentment pure faith perfect faith oh let me see that okay so last sunday we had did we leave off so we left off last sunday from luke 10 19 behold i give unto you power to tread upon serpent and upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy nothing shall by any means hurt you get that now, now, now look at the power all the power of the enemy that is absolute power over all absolute power only god has power over all the power of the enemy only god the devil is powerful the next powerful being outside god and outside of you is the devil i hope you understand it and i hope you know that so don't you take the devil for a joke a powerful being let me see that he could tell a lie in heaven and deceive a thought of god's angels and brought them down and today he has set up a kingdom and as a god of this war don't you play with the devil you know let me see that praise god but he says i give you power over all the power of the enemy so these guys had so much on them what a power that was given to them that was too much and we saw last week but they had this power which is absolute but they don't have corresponding faith faith that was necessary they had faith but the faith they had is not correspondence to this power so they healed some sickness they healed some disease then they came across one lunatic boy strong demon and the power couldn't walk and jesus just came from the mountain after being transfigured coming right from the third pool right from mount pyramid he was one anointed he had just met he had just met two angels in their celestial being elijah and moses and he was coming that one anointed god has just confirmed him this time it is he hear ye him my beloved son hear ye him God had just adopted him coming down the mountain praise God and these disciples were at the foot of the mountain struggling to cast out these devils in the name of Jesus the devil can't even move and only Peter James and John were up the mountain with Jesus 
and the rest of the disciples were down there a segment of the ministry of jesus christ down the foot of the mountain they could climb up on the seventh step to be anointed with charity and the charity that came now had more elijah in it and you can't have that charity down the foot of the mountain you must climb up ascending prayer and come to mount zion the city of god because the pyramid seven voices seven angels will only cut the pyramid at the top not at the bottom so the rest of the ministry was at the bottom but god took a part of that ministry peter james like he's doing now he's taking a part of the ministry and part of that ministry i'm gonna bring the truth bringing us up higher on the third step on top of the mountain so we can come in contact with the seven angels seven seals seven thunders seven voices we must encounter the angels we must meet them praise god because the seven thunders are in the hands of those seven angels oh hallelujah praise god then jesus was coming down let me see that and down at the foot of the hill he met this woman with a son lunatic master i brought my son to your disciples and they could not heal him with absolute power power over all and the clue heal is lunatic and jesus said bring him here perfect faith he just rebuked the spirit and it was delivered at that same moment then came the disciples tell us master why can't we cast out this devil we prayed we fasted we spoke in tongues we did everything why can't we cast him out here come the secret because of your unbelief what we see it not because of adultery not because of fornication not because of, because of unbelief 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 yes unbelief let me see that now fear and the affair jesus christ forgives sin but all the sins he forgave was with the reference to cases sick heal you take up your bed and go your sins are forgiven you so christ could handle the consequences of sin that was what he handled for three and a half years but that is different from sin as unbelief to handle unbelief that does it just come by take up your bread and walk no because the only thing that handles unbelief is faith You, you understand what I'm saying now? So it can be obvious, it will heal the palsy. But they say your sins have forgiven you. What was sin was sin brought you to this. So you will the palsy, take up your bed and go. Your sins have forgiven you. Your sins have forgiven you. The sins that caused this palsy is forgiven you. But that doesn't make that man a believer. Because to forgive sin, not the consequence now, to forgive sin is only the bride. I hope you get it so this is not about being delivered this is more than deliverance coming to church you are delivered from this from that but you still don't have faith then what happens if i pray for you today you are sick i pray for you today you are healed your sins are forgiven you god healed you as a proof that whatever is the cause of that sickness is gone but I hope that sickness won't come back. But most times you get sick again. Then you come back for another deliverance. And then you are delivered. You say, praise God. Out of few years, you come back sick again. But if you get the faith, if you get the faith, you can't be sick no more. Praise God. Let me see that. All right. I hope you get it. I hope you see it. 
and God can forgive sin. The sin question can't be handled for three and a half years because the wages of sin have to be paid for. The wages of sin must be death. There has to be a sacrifice for sin. So Jesus Christ did all that. He forgave sins. Your sins are forgiven you, but He can't forgive sin. He can't take away the nature. So even these disciples who we are with him who we had called sanctifier still had unbelief he had to take them on the other side of the atonement he had to cross them over to the other side he had to bring them back to eden huh? <laughs> praise god hallelujah i'm excited this morning you know because i'm happy happier because i'm free Oh, maybe see that revelation maybe see that so he gave them this power absolute power over all the power of the enemy but he didn't give them the faith to operate that's why just after he told them after he said oh you want to give you power and they came back say oh master we use the power spirit as subject unto us he said oh don't reach out because of this because he knew you you're going to have some bottlenecks somewhere down the line but whether we judge because your name see so it connected the rejoicing your names up in the heaven because why you can't come to perfect faith except you take that book because the words in the book that's the believer I hope you got it. Never see that. So this brother that we are not believer, believer yet. Real believer in the sense of the word. Malachi will reveal who the believer is. That the believer is the words in the book. So that's why Christ had perfect faith. Because he recognized that he was the word. Because the real believer is the words in the book. And the words in the book is him. And there is no unbelief in him. let me say it again who is the believer the words in the book is said that's the believer and the words in the book is him who is him jesus christ and there's no unbelief in the world so the world is perfect faith let me see that so how can you get a believer the believer is the watch in the book so if you don't have the book how do you get the watch in the book how do you get a believer that's what i'm telling you that if the five of ministry can't raise you up to the watch in the book it's all a human effort now human effort is will end up in futility that's how futile our human efforts are we'll keep shouting and shout and shout and shout and fast and fast and fast all ends up in futility because for this age is back to the world god is trying to bring you back to the world guess who keep the world its preeminences people come to church all they want is some sensation to prove god is there no and they have no regard for the world no regard for doctrine no regard for the message just a sensation I can't pastor that church. This not Pentecost. Your regard for the world. This age is the age of the world. And if the ministry is not careful, you are going to drag us craftily back to Pentecost. They only come to church for sensations. So they build their faith on sensations on emotions on fastings and prayer and they've abandoned the world restored back by the prophet because they are getting results based on sensation not real promises we're not going their back we're marching forward take the world no tap your, tap your brother say brother take the world don't want the word of god who 
rejoice in the Lord. The word is your only hope. The word is your only hope. The heavens and the earth shall pass away. But my word, just hang on to that word. If I die, let me die on the wall. I can't leave the wall. If I'm going down, let me go down with the world. I will not leave the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. The world can't fail you. It will always stand with you. Let me see that. That's why I'm ashamed to come to church because I did this, I did that. You did that, you did this. The world didn't do that. So come to church, still take the word. If the pastor blasted you last week, he blasted your flesh. But you are the word. Come back and say, I repent. But I'm still hanging there because the word is my only hope for change. I can't bring real change without the word. Let me see that. Oh, well, Pastor, I just did something terrible two months ago. And every time I come to church, you are blasting me. I'm blasting your flesh. Take the word. When I blast you, say amen to the word. Because your only hope for deliverance is in the world. Your flesh can fail you. Your gifts can fail you. Your mind can fail you. But the word of God cannot fail. The word will stand there. The word will deliver you. The word will set you free. That sober call Yama. Feel like speaking in tongues, man. The word cannot fail. Every see that. The word. The more you try to abandon the world, you begin to try on your own human effort. Let me try. Let me do some fasting. Let me do some this. This ends in futility. How far do you go? Your flesh is weak. Your flesh is terrible. Praise God. But God gave you a promise. The word. Keep telling yourself it shall be well. Till my change come. I'm holding on to the word. God can't fail me. The word cannot fail. Now I look nasty. I look so terrible. But I'm holding on to the word. Then you come into season. Elohim season. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then God looks down. He sees the word in you. And he sends down the Holy Spirit. He sends down the dynamics. To begin to operate the word in you. By the time you know it. You begin to be transformed. Transform, 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 transform. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because the potential power to transform you is in the world. Wow. Let me see that. That was the faith of Jesus. Bam says it relied on the world. He didn't just know the word though. He said he relied on it. He depended on the word. And that is what we cannot do as a church. Just depend on the word. The word says you shall be sealed. Depend on the word. If I'm not sealed last week, but God said so, I shall be adopted. Because God said so, I shall be delivered. Because God said so, I shall be perfect because God said so. I shall be raptured because God said so. We lie on the world. Oh, let me see that. You see that? Eh? That's why Christ had perfect faith. They relied. Depend on the word. Bam says, why can't we do the same thing? 
what is really hard and will line on the world just depend on it what is what is hard your strength and your effort and your contact and the world which is more reliable how many of your contact have not failed you you have all the contact how many times has it not failed even your gift you have a gift how many times has your gifts not failed but one thing cannot fail vindicated reality the world cannot fail the world is as constant as the north star everything else can move but the world cannot move oh what do you see see that Bam said that's how we did it i give you power i give you power see they had the power but they didn't have faith to operate the word that was in them see what i mean but jesus had it he was the word and he had faith that what he said will happen see bring him here he had faith with his power how did he how did he do it Bam said, he said i can do nothing in myself back to saint john 5 19 perfect faith praise why because he relied upon what he was he relied in knowing that he was the word he just relied in knowing that he was the word what a consciousness just to know i am the word you are going deeper you are going beyond your skin you go beyond your skin this flesh is a failure so put your flesh aside there is something deep inside of you it's called your soul and your soul is the word of god let me see that he relied in knowing that he was the word so now you see the disciples we are the mystic they had the power but the book had not come down yet the book wasn't open yet and christ just told them this your rejoicing it is only short-lived begin to be because your names so if this rejoicing is not connected to the book in heaven it will be short-lived it's all emotions and that was true few weeks down the road they got stuck with the lunatic demon that stopped them that demon stopped them on their tracks the demon said you succeeded in in Baoma. you made it up in in, in saint Benalion, but i'm going to stop you here and the demon stopped them on their tracks they couldn't move forward the revival came to an end all this revival they came rejoicing they were jumping the revival all ended up with one lunatic demon <laughs> doubt came again but i thought jesus gave us power over all the power of the enemy how come we can heal this boy the revival ended up the fires all ended up the altar became empty and then came jesus to put fire back on the altar bring him here in the name just cast him out he said master why can't we do it look at how we are sweating we are sweating in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name look at how we are sweating how do you do it so simply because you have unbelief let me see them ah and this can wait not out for prayer and fasting not the prayer and fasting Pentecost is telling me about. Not the, not the fasting as, as to abstinence from food. But a fasting that brings you into the presence of Shekinah. That's the fasting. That fasting that brings you into the secret place. The most high. You are locked away into his glory. That's the fasting abstain from the things of the world abstain the lust of the flesh lust of the eyes that's the real fasting not just food 
you cut yourself off from the things of the world come out of all my people that's your fasting and be not partakers you're not just trying to cut yourself off of food but you are still enjoying the pleasure of tv the place of the nigerian movies that's not fasting you just you just open and opening doors for ulcer you are fasting for the whole day and for the whole day you're in front of a tv watching some nigerian movie and the only fast you fast you don't eat rice and you're busy you're busy watching big brother niger on your dstv and you are fasting huh no way! come on has gospel we are here i see you caught it some word just came upon you praise god that's not fasting you are staying from the wall so you've been fasting long time ago that day you said goodbye wall good morning glory you started your fasting you started your abstinence abstain abstain from the things of the world abstain from this abstain from that praise god hallelujah so i've been on this fasting way back from 1980 i've been fasting praise god and i'm still fasting i'm going to fast and fast until i connect with shekinah glory let me see so you see how many believers they fast and fast prayers are not answered because for them fast is just to abstain from potato leaf and cassava leaf for a certain day every other thing of the world is moving the the movies are still going on they can't even play some holy movies put some message they still watch the same big brother niger still watch all the aiv still watch all the feel of and pray no abstinence praise god and you are fasting that's not fasting you're just wasting your time and god's time but we are here now seven thunder give you faith real fasting is back i hope i hope you get it and i hope somebody can shout on this one <laughs> oh just tap your brother say brother i just saw it <laughs> no say brother i just really saw it That's sister umo I, I just saw it you see that so how many how many fasters are we going to have the next month hmm oh that's good that's good effort. that's good that means our next month fasting all the tv is short all the big brother nights are closed all the ayv closed all the internet locked down and give all to the lord jesus christ now you're getting ready you abstain from the things of the world how many of you know this morning that there's something called lost that's in your eyes <laughs> do you know your eyes has something called lost it's, it's, it's here and do you know there's something in your flesh that's also called lost And you know the, in your soul called pride of life but it is also lost the lust of the soul there is it so this is your eyes your eyes like to see new things but eyes is lustful lost of the eyes that is the moat that's all of our eyes so no man has a right to condemn any man until you first remove the moat the moat in your eyes that's the that's that's the moat Christ remove that moat so you can see more clearly 
because your eyes are lost in your eyes are not single lost of the eyes you see this see this you want everything your eyes is lost in no pastor let me let me just let me just look let me just watch the the pornography let me just i'm not doing it to i just want to watch let me, let me just watch this this movie is going around this movie the things i'm hearing there i just want to just for today let me just watch that's the mood and until the mood is removed leave me alone <laughs> leave me alone oh praise god <laughs> hallelujah praise god because once the mood is in your eyes you are not seeing clearly you won't see with a single eye you have a very good car that is serving you lost of the eyes you have seen one car you want it again stay with the eye hey these eyes What's wrong with his eyes? The eyes. Say, God, change my eyes. <laughs> Are you getting it? That the moat. We only have it. After after one year of the same phone. After one, they want the phone again. Your eyes have seen something. They keep sending the phones on your phone. Now, the latest one now the eyes begin to lost let me just have a look let me just look at this sister the way she's walking today let me just take a look and as, as you are looking you are seeing things we are not seeing because the lust of your eyes are now going beyond the clothes of the sister oh that's right we are seeing a decent dress upon the sister but because your eyes has another thing there is a moat there small one when it looks it sees beyond the dress it goes deeper then what is hidden by the dress is what you now want that's how men fail but we are here perfect faith lost of the eyes lost of the flesh pride of life So sometimes you have to turn your face quick and don't you joke with this don't become too spiritual no matter how spiritual you are the lost is there but once you come to saint john 5 19 god take the two eyes off he replaces your eyes with the eyes of vision then all you see is what god sees he take your two eyes off and give you seven eyes the seven eyes of the lamb the seven eyes of elohim oh glory to god hallelujah can somebody say amen those are the eyes i'm looking for seven eyes seven on seven spirit so until you can get those seven eyes from god these your two eyes are full of lust lust of the flesh you know your flesh of course is very lustful look at look at your flesh now it is so lustful even though god give you that complexion you want to be fear because you saw somebody fear your eyes saw somebody who is fear and now you look at yourself you are dark you want to be fear your flesh is going after that and and you are fasting and we are all fasting now tell somebody say brother i'm just seeing it i'm just seeing it the moat is going off of my eyes i'm just seeing it the lust of my eyes are just going out the moat now i can see clearly But you still with all this just take the word like you're doing here now just say amen
that, that's maturity. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. Now, how did lust come into being? Now, lust is not another form of love. Lust is perverted love. It looks so much and feels so much like love. But it's the nature of it. Because lust is self-centered. That's what lust is. Lust cares only about its own self. Love for yourself. A love that can't reach out to others. A love that always have an ulterior motive to it. It's a conditional love. So it's not pure. It's not perfect. It's lost. So why do men lost? And Paul tells you, I mean, I mean, Paul tells you, Peter tells you how, James, sorry, tells you how people sin. First, you have to lust. Lust is the reason for temptation. So every man is tempted when he's what? When he's drawn away by his own lust. The lust of his eyes, lust of his flesh, lust of his soul. That's how he, that's how he sins. So if there was no lust, they won't be really seen. Correct? So that way, when man fell, man became hybrid, the whole thing changed. Because it wasn't so in the beginning. Now your flesh is lost in. Your eyes are lost in. It's not you. Because you're hybrid. But in the beginning, it wasn't so. Is that right? So lost is when love is absent divine love is absent but when love comes when divine love comes a love that doesn't vaunt itself is not puffed up doesn't care for itself that love that only cares for others that feels for others that love that shows concern for others that love that sees what others don't have and tries to provide it that's the love of God When that love comes, lust can't operate. Are you getting it? Now, so these men didn't have perfect faith to operate the word that was in them. Because why the faith they need was a faith that worked by love. They don't have that faith yet. Faith that worked by love, that's perfect faith. When your faith is operating on the same John 5 19 because Elohim the father himself is love and here is the son the word so the word placed under the spirits and the word is faith but now the faith which is the word Jesus Christ is being operated by the spirit the intelligence faith working by love that's perfect faith getting it understanding it that's the faith these guys they have it so they had the word they had power but they don't have corresponding faith that faith that's worked by love which is perfect faith that faith that's based on forgiveness because the ultimate expression of love is in forgiveness The greatest way God can express his love to you is in forgiveness of sin. So brotherly, that put brotherly kindness on the top of every other virtue apart from charity. So brotherly kindness is the chief virtue apart from charity. It tops all the other virtues. This is powerful, you know. Now, brotherly kindness is not about what you don't do to those who offend you. Jesus Christ made it clear in Saint John in Matthew 5. This is exactly how he wanted to forgive. This is the forgiveness. This is how you become like your father in heaven. He said, Saint John Matthew 5, he said, You have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as and hate thine enemy. 
that's what is out there right but he said but i say unto you love your enemies bless them that cause you so forgiveness is not when they cause you and you don't cause back that's not forgiveness so forgiveness is not what you don't do back to those who have done something to you that means rightfully when they curse you you're supposed to curse them back and if you forgive them it means if they curse you, you don't curse them back you forgive them but that's the forgiveness this is forgiveness forgiveness is bless them that curse you so forgiveness is what you do not what you don't do so if they curse you how do you forgive them bless them do something about that do good to them that hate you don't just say well they hate me I, I will forgive them I won't hurt them back that's the forgiveness but if they hate you do something about it do good to them that hate you because why it's called brotherly kindness you are showing him your kind the man's kind is evil you are not evil what is your kind your kind is good because god is good so god's kind is good so don't let an evil kind make you show evil because there is no evil in you you are good so if the man is evil that is his kind that is his image but your kind your image is good and every seed bring forth after his kind And the only time I will know your kind is when your kind is challenged. So do somebody evil that you know is kind. If you do somebody evil, if his kind is evil, he will also do you evil. The evil only came to provoke, to bring out your kind. But if goodness is who you are, if somebody hates you the scripture says do him good because to be good is your kind it is called brotherly kindness that is god's kindness that's why god gives the rain his own rain and his own song on the just and on the unjust Wow. so do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you so if they persecute you don't persecute them back because to persecute is not your kind what do you do pray for them God please change them it's better you change them than to judge them God change by the mercy. There is no glory in judging people and destroying them. But what is more glorious if the sinner changes and comes back to church? Then God is glorified. That God is great. Like when the mercy is back, we are rejoicing. The devil is a liar. He has lost. He kept you so long. But they prayed for you. Now you are back. You are smiling. Clapping your hands. The devil has failed. Look at John. Look at Christiana. Look at your wife. We are all happy. Shame to the devil. Shame to Satan. Shame to the enemies of the cross. This is more glorious. Than to have had. That when Abbasi was killed in an accident, and we will say, Oh, God has judged him. But it would have been a shame to the cross. Because if he had died, they would say, Look at the Christian. Look, look, at, look at how he died. The shame goes back to the cross. But thank God for the cross. Victory, victory. 
Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Victory, victory. Jesus conquered the devil. Let me see that. <laughs> it's finished. This is my old Pentecostal. So praise God. Hey, hey. Let me see that. You see that she may be that he may be the children of your father who is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward of ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect. So Jesus Christ is not making an inference of perfection, but to this. That this becomes the basis of becoming like your father in heaven. Hmm. Be ye perfect, even as your father which is in heaven is also perfect. So now that's why we say perfect faith is based on forgiveness. Now I just showed you the scriptures where it's coming from. Because Jesus saying be ye perfect was based on just what he told you that even he himself as God gives his reign and his son to the just and the unjust he doesn't withhold his reign from the people who cause him from the Mohammedans he doesn't withhold the anointing from those who don't believe the message even though this message was the son of man in the prophet but he still blesses the Pentecostals who are even saying that Brother Branham was a false prophet he still gives them some signs and wonders and that must not that but that mustn't lure you away this is all god's kindness but at the end of the day when the seven seal finishes god now comes down to separate the sheep from the goat this is his this is his goodness and it's sometimes unbelievable the same people who said that brother branham was a failed god's general that he went into error look at benny him them what they will say but god still blesses them with the anointing and that is even perverting your eyes how can they have it you don't have it because you see that i said because you don't have doctrine the man that is solid he's not carried away this is all god's kindness You will send the rain, send the sun. But be perfect. So God sent the prophet, the anointed ones at the end time falls. But this is all God's kindness. What? Giving them real miracles. And not only have they, have they turned down this message, they are speaking evil. They say this message is false. Can you imagine, but yet still, Bram taught things that are false. The doctrines came from hell. Yes, but God still blesses them. That tells you how perfect his nature is. That's God. You, you can do that. Or he can. But he now says, be like your father in heaven with this reference and it's tough for all of us so the disciples didn't have this faith you are praying for God to give you a ministry of deliverance ministry of delivering people but what's the content of your love God does not entrust power to a man that cannot forgive because forgiveness is the heart of the cross are you getting it so god doesn't give power to children they give power to sons and how do you tell a mature son sons who are mature forgive i told you two weeks ago that there's gospel there's a, that there's a gospel of salvation 
Buddha is the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom gospel is for sons, not for children. Now the gospel of salvation requires that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you are saved. But the gospel of the kingdom is predicated on power. Because the kingdom of God came not in world but power. So it is it, the kingdom goes with power, not salvation. Salvation, all you need for salvation, just believe. But to operate the kingdom, you need power. And power is not for children, it's for sons. Power to rule in the midst of your enemies. Power over all the power of the enemy. That's for adopted sons. Sons in whose heart is a desire for the kingdom. They have no private agenda. They are dead to self. They're not even doing it because they want a ministry. They want to come out, cast out devils, go back and sit on the pew. They are not doing it because they want a ministry. They just want to see God's kingdom going forward. So they don't have to be at the back and they pray and somebody get a heal and because somebody get a heal, they now say, I'm a minister. No! That is too private. Can somebody say amen? They say, no, 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 be there. I'll just pray for you, praise God. Because their motive is just a kingdom. Glory to God, hallelujah. No, 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 the kingdom. They don't assume that because well now they can sing and people get getting slayed should be interpreted as I'm pastor. No. Motive is not correct. When the kingdom is your focus, you don't have to be seen. You don't have to be noticed. God sees you in secrets. He sees you in private. And he wants you openly. Somebody say amen to that church. Maybe you just happen to know that the anointing in this church you prayed all night. You spent hours praying, Lord, bless the pastor my anointing. And you came to church, you saw your prayers answered. But that must not be translated. That I am a prophetess. No, no, no. The, the agenda is not wrong. Just stay behind your secret place. Just stay behind your secret place. When you come to church, you see the fire of God. You say, Thank you, Jesus. Don't even tell nobody at all. When the open season comes, when the open season comes, when the open season comes, God goes and picks you out and place you here and begin to announce you and begin to talk about you. Hear ye him. Can we see that? That's why this season we must all have a secret place. Not all these open things we are trying to do. Because all these things you are doing, what is in your heart? It's because I want to be a minister. It's not about the kingdom. I want to be a pastor. So all this your fasting and praying is for ministry. You don't pray for ministry. He said he gave gift to men. Go and sleep. If God calls you, you can be in the wrong bar. You pick it there. How do you pray for a ministry? I don't, I don't get you. Ministry, he gave gift unto men. Look at Peter, he was a fisherman. He gave him the keys of the kingdom. You don't have to worry. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Just find your secret place. See, all these most they must all die these are all the motives you see a sister in church by the grace of god god is now using her he's, he's made two or three prophecies that is now beginning to be translated into prophetic ministry that was messed up pentecost those sisters ought to be at the background
well how come she's not the one when she's the one giving all the prophets it's a body you see because this hand is the one that can lift up this thing my head can lift this can carry it does that make this hand the head tell me now because this my hand can lift, lift up daniel Amen. does that make this hand my head no it is still hand it must stay as hand Not because you cannot lift up some heavy things you say no i'm to be the boss because i'm the lifter what what is the head doing you don't see what the head is doing because the head is doing things in hiding but the head is coordinating you don't see the head comes in the open the head doesn't kagi kagi that it is small but the head is the coordinator of the entire body let somebody shout hallelujah the head does everything in secret so nobody sees the head the kingdom god begin to use you now god give you a spirit to be talking to people and you are getting influence when they once talking to them they cannot trust you because they cannot trust you to be telling you things they don't even tell the assistant pastor the pastor you begin to translate that i have a ministry people have got that you do those things that's how men just jump because in their heart it's not for kingdom they want a ministry they want popularity no let your hearts be the kingdom because as i said when the open season comes god will take you from the secrets the bible says he will reward you openly beyond our wildest imagination god will just pick you up and all of us will say why did god pick up this brother he said this brother the 10 years of your success was this brother i see what he wasn't preaching he said he wasn't preaching but it was a prayer warrior he was the one talking to people he was the one doing this but that is your secret place that is your secret place and you don't have to say it god has to say it for you in the open you may see that people people behind the scenes they don't even want to be known that they want doing the support supporting financially they don't even say it you must have a secret place you must have things you do for god in secret At the time i had to call you the brother god bless him he had to come to all of us don't you know what that my first will give to ministry no you don't talk like that that's true those things all have the the carry spirit what you want to do for god because it's the open reward the promise is i will reward you openly and when god rewards you open it's not man no when god rewards a man openly who can come against it who can speak against it who can talk against it but we are too flippant because it's all conceited pride you want the five minutes of the applause men will give you wow it's brother james it's brother daniel well that's what they have done to you and you want that you want the clap they've clapped how far does clapping take you have a secret place have things you do for god that only you and god knows make it so private say pastor please this one don't tell nobody in fact why you are knowing because i have to do it to you this is my secret altar something god can look and reward you openly how did we know cornelius was giving arms because god said it nobody knew it at all that was his own secret altar but in the open season in the open season in adoption time god brought him out 
And the Bible said, because of his arms giving and his prayer. Look at where God brought that man from. Not from the church, you outside. Because of arm giving and prayer, he was not brought out. Today we all know about him. What, what is your secret place? Maybe sit here. What's your secret place? It's not prayer. What do you do for this kingdom? Hmm? I'm praying for two hours. If you're two hours sick, don't even tell nobody. Just pray. Nobody is seeing you. But every time you pray for the kingdom, you pray for the ministry secret. God is recording it. Hallelujah. And nobody will know. Who think who, who think the it's me, it's but Ajide is that they are the ones moving the church. But God in the secret place knows there is a sister who, who wake up 12 o'clock every night and pray for the ministry. We don't know. He doesn't talk. Then the opposition comes. Then it surprises all of us. When God now comes and picks our sister out. Yes. And all of us are saying, what happened? What, what did he do? What did he do? What kept this church for all these years was this sister. Every tra- When we hear that, who, who can say it's a lie? Who can talk? You are helping the ministry. You are pushing the ministry to give the ministry pride. You don't want the pastor to beg. You are going to support him financially. That's not something you allowed. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. How do you know yeah. if you are the one keeping this pastor going? Nobody will know. Amen. You are the secret behind this pastor's move. This pastor is getting a car. You are behind it. Amen. That can be your secret place. Amen. Because it is all to push the kingdom. I, I, I would like to see this pastor begging. This pastor driving an old car is a servant of God behind the scenes. Your pride is that you say, Man of God, doing well. And they just see the pastor living well. Nobody knows how. They are surprised. How is the pastor living well? The secret is there. Then come the open season. And you could be sitting there, they think, Oh, is this pastor? Oh, it's James. Is this? Nobody knows. Because she tells nobody. Because it's, it's for the kingdom. That if this pastor is famished, if this pastor lacks, that can be an instrument the enemy can use. So if God bless, I'll be supporting. But don't make a trumpet. You know, you know, this church, you know, every month I'll give 50 million. That's okay. That, that's your reward, though. And she not clap you, and they don't clap. Okay. But a man, five minutes they have forgotten you. But because you don't have secret place, your prayer, all of us know you are praying for church every two hours. Ah. He said, do these things in secret. He said, if your arms giving, but what he's saying, you can be giving, but, but you must come to a point where even giving must be like secret. You must have, you must have secret givings. Everything there's a secret part of it. So your prayer there's a secret part. You, we pray open, but we must, we must have secret prayer life that only you and God know what is in your heart. In your giving, I time to give, but have secret. I want to support the poor people in church, Christian poor people. That's in your heart. Kingdom. The keyboard is getting faulty. I want to buy it. Please, hey, Pastor, please. I don't do in fact the money you go and buy it. Mm-hmm. So they will not see me. I don't want to even bring the keyboard in church. Mm-hmm. Please, I beg you, Pastor, please. I don't have to do it without you knowing. Please don't tell nobody. I beg sir. Mm-hmm. This is my own this is my own secret covenant. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just a keyboard though, but the reference with which you do it. Then nobody sees it. They just see a keyboard. So nobody knows. Even the leader doesn't know how the keyboard comes about. And nobody's seen you. Then the open season comes. 
when in that open season, all of us will be thinking, well, it should be Brother Conte, Brother Daniel, and Brother James. They are the ones that God should be vindicating. We begin to see strange manifestations. We don't see, we begin to see Brother Moses coming up. Where, where was Moses? What was he doing in church? God said, what was he doing in church? You don't know, eh? Uh, let me tell you. Uh, said, ah, Moses. What? Eh? And when God talks about a man, who dare you to raise your tongue against him? Now you hear about people like Anna who are praying fasting, they're serving God, because the Bible said it. It was a secret for years. But she fasted. He said for the consolation. She didn't make it the trumpet. Well, me, I'm going to take up this, this challenge. Since you're not, you're, not, you're not praying and fasting, I'm going to fast for Israel. So everybody will know she's one fasting for Israel. It's, it's, it's not done like that. All your giving is out. Everybody knows you're a giver. You have no secret. You have no ministry that you are supporting in private that nobody knows, only you and God. So everything of your activities, God put a secret part. Yeah. So you're giving. He said, give. You can give. But come to a place where you do some givings, where your left hand must not even know. Yeah. You must have those set of givings. But you can't come to those points if you don't have kingdom agenda on your mind. Because all the giving you give is all about self. So I can be recognized. If the kingdom is your motive, you are only interested in God knowing it. You are only interested in God knowing it. Because God is the rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Let somebody shout hallelujah. And when you do those things not based on secret covenant, they don't hold. So we give, but there's some secret givings you never know. And that becomes the reason why God is empowering you. You make a covenant with God that this one nobody will know. Mm. You will never know that one. That becomes the source of the man's power. You other ones in public. But the covenant one. Yeah. <coughs> oh, no. The prayer, so pray in church. Oh, Lord, speak. But the real prayer, you don't know that one. Yeah. The secret. Yeah. The prayers you make for people. Yeah. The prayers you make for the church. Yeah. The prayers you make for the ministry. Yeah. The prayers you make for the bride of Jesus Christ. The prayers you make for this message. Say, God, your message, your prophet, this message is our legacy. This is not about the common or the Branham. It's about your name. Because this message carries your name. Confirm this message. Send fire upon this message for the sake of your name. The secret God sees them. Your burden is for this bright kingdom. When you take up those fastings for the king, nobody knows that's one. In fact, you are trying to let nobody know that you are fasting. Yes. Fast for yourself, you can come and let us know you fast for your vehicle, fine. But have some things you do in private. You know what I'm saying? Not that, but I don't say don't give openly, but have a giving. Something God can reward you on in the open. What you call secret place? But you're a Christian. You have no. Where is, where, where is your secret power? When the scripture says, "If this and give, this must not know." The day you don't. If you give, if all your giving is that is how it is. All your giving, if left to give right, will know. Bible says you have received your reward. So you end up giving, giving, giving. You don't get reward. So it is not the giving that brings the reward. It is how you give. If there, if there is no secret behind your giving. So the only giving that God rewards you for 
is the give you give with your left and your right hand does not know which means as you give most times in the open learn to have a, a giving we are even your left hand not to you now my left hand must not know that's how secretive it must be my left hand must not know Now, if you check your life, you, have, you don't have that kind of giving. It's not there. Then you tell why your power to get things is not real. And you see what I'm giving. I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving. The reward, the secret is not in the giving. The reward. Why so many can't lose out? They have a secret. So all you see is what God gives them in the open. How, how are they doing? How is he getting it? You will not know. You don't know the secret things we are into that nobody knows. Those are things we will never say. That becomes your altar. Church, we are here. Church will they say, now I see it. Church will say, now I see it. Hmm? So let us all pray open prayer. All of us know we all pray our yours. Because when we pray, all of us are making our hands like this. Fine. But all this of prayer life, is there any secret? We all give. Now we are going to give offerings and all of us will see us giving. But do you have any secret giving that becomes a covenant? In fact, when you are giving it to the ministry, you don't even write your name. To make it dead secret. I just want to give this in support. The kingdom. I, I don't want any recognition. I don't want nobody to announce me. I don't want to know. It's for the kingdom. Something God in you alone says. See now, 